group exemption. Group exemption avoids, this avoids is referring to tax because we're an IRS website. The only thing they deal with is tax. This avoids the need for each of the organizations to apply for exemptions individually. A group exemption letter has the same effect as an individual exemption letter. A tax exempt is the name of the game. Tax exempt, not just because you don't want to pay a dollar twenty-five cent sales tax. Tax exempt when it comes to you making money, whereby if you make capital gains, the tax from that might be two hundred k. Who the hell wants to pay that when they can keep that in their pocket? Rich people care about stuff like that. If they don't go through the route of using other type of depreciable assets like luxury vehicles to offset other things such as capital gains, well, they use entities like these and conglomerates. Simple as that. And of those four types of entities that can come together as a conglomerate, conglomerate is a financial sophisticated word like a double speak. How they say disenfranchise, disenfranchise really means poor neighborhood, right? Conglomerate in a financial world just means a trust of trusts, meaning five, six, 10, 20, 50 trusts that come together as one body. They have the same power as a nation state, the same power as a government body politic. When they come together, when all those entities that are normally individually exempt from filing or exempt from taxation, whether it's use, sales, receipt, whatever, income, whatever it is, whenever those individual entities naturally exempt the different types of exemption come together with their individual exemption merged as one like a Voltron or like a Lego, they're referred to as by companies behind closed doors and this is how IRS begins to step to you behind closed doors to buy you out in case your conglomerate gets too powerful before they start seeing you as a threat but then again that's another story that's what they mean by the administrative portion of it but if you're just doing things in a regular series bond level and you're still partnering with holders of due course and whatnot which at this point I suspect or at least I hope you know what holders of due course are and what their roles are millionaires billionaires all those people you have to know this because this is how they function and this is the language they speak when they say wealthy people don't teach people what they know this is part of it this is what wealthy people and people who know how things work teach their children you should know about it because information is your birthright anyway what types of organizations hello hello beautiful people welcome back so my hope is that I can make this video pretty short but someone asked me a question on patron page regarding them opening their account and they asked a question regarding a gen number and I can give this response to this particular party but I suspect that in the future people will begin to ask the same questions and it is along the same line of everything with the trust, express trust, and 508. But a little bit farther ahead. So I might as well just make this video as a response. And if anyone else asks in the future, or if you see me send you this video later in the future, know that it's a response to the same thing. So there's something called GEN number. I suspect people will gradually begin to go through this process in their stage of development. If you've ever heard me briefly in some trust videos mention something about waiting for a, a specific group of people to come together with trust to do certain things together as treaties and nation states. Well, part of it is what's called group exemptions. The shorthand for it is GEN hash, meaning Gen number. I can go into financial dictionaries, I can go into public laws, but it might be a little bit convoluted. So let's start from the most rudimentary stuff and the big boogeyman that everyone chases after. Group exemptions. The N that comes after it is called group exemption number. The IRS sometimes recognizes a group of organizations. Let me zoom this in. All right. The IRS sometimes recognizes a group of organizations, a group of organizations, 
again, recall when I, when it comes to land and 508 and express trust, I mentioned something about people coming together as a nation state or as trust treaties, etc., etc. And then I make subsequent videos relating to land banking and 98 number and how that attaches to the express trust and how that can be used as fungible instruments and whatnot. All this ties to the non-UCC and all the monetary stuff related to the birth certificate. Because you can take the funding from that certificate, turn it into a specific type of series. There are different types of series of bonds. Whatever works for you based on any particular activity or per contract, you can turn it into that, aka Express Trust, which is the per contract portion. And then come together with a group of people and gain the benefit of that. And every time that you make any monies, the IRS, of course, always want their cut. They're the mafia. They're the kingpin. They're the one who plays the role of the sword for the king that comes and basically tells people, give us your cut. The esquires play the role of the shield for the king and queen. Literally, the Latin word esquire means shield. So that's the legal portion to protect them by way of sovereign immunity and always defending them one way or the other. Either through processes or just through trash talking, a lot of deception. But the sword of anyone acting as sovereign is, believe it or not, the taxation arm. Because whoever controls the gold controls power. In this case, since the dollar, which used to be backed by gold, has been made equivalent to the power of gold, whoever controls the dollar now controls everyone and everything. And the way that quote unquote US dollar, which is the world economy dollar as of now, December 2023. Maybe in six, seven years from now, it might change with the BRICS nation. But nonetheless, right now, the US dollar is equivalent to gold and it is being treated as such. And the sword to enforce the control of that gold, aka dollar, is the IRS, who has the first 98 number, which is 98 0, which I mentioned in this video. And that video also spoke of land banking and when it comes to 98 so and so and all this ties together. I wasn't expecting to make this video as quick, but well, here it is. Now, when you all come together to do certain things, the IRS, which is the kingpin or the, the sword or the arm for the one who intends to control the gold by getting their cut, they have exemptions in their system for nation states of trust or certain types of entities that are naturally exempt from taxation when they come together and do business in finance. Because remember, IRS does not exist just for the heck of it. IRS exists for the purpose of taxing people when it comes to money. The money is taxed based primarily on three ways, which was shown in this video. First part of the infinite banking. First way it is taxed is what entity is making it. The second way to determine whether it's taxed is how you receive it. Third way it is taxed is how you use it. Because you not only get taxed when you receive, you also get taxed when you spend. Those tax, use tax, all that stuff. So and so. And IRS plays a huge role in that on all 50 state level, hence federal. So now, presumption is you already know how to create entities that don't qualify for tax. Two of those that we have spoken of in the past are the 508 and Express Trust. There's a reason why I always go on about the 508 Express Trust, 508 Express Trust, over and over. There are four main types of entities that are exempt and can qualify for this thing called group exemption. And of those four types of entities that can come together as a conglomerate, conglomerate is a financial sophisticated word like a double speak, or how they say disenfranchised. Disenfranchised really means poor neighborhood. Right. Conglomerate in a financial world just means a trust of trusts, meaning five, six, 10, 20, 50 trusts that come together as one body. They have the same power as a nation state, the same power as a government body politic. When they come together, when all those entities that are normally individually exempt from filing or exempt from taxation, whether it's use, sales, receipt, whatever, income, whatever it is, whenever those individuals entities naturally exempt, 
the different types of exemption come together with their individual exemption merged as one like a Voltron or like a Lego they're referred to as group exemption and usually there's a number that's issued for that group exemption in place of those individuals entities doing their individual things so that the IRS can see them as one and not just for lack of a better term not fuck with them as a whole because that's what government entities benefit from remember Express Trust is one of the four entities that benefit from group exemptions Five is the second governmental entities are the third the way governmental entities are exempt from taxation is something called group exemption you know how they do that? They do it through agencies. When you go to USA.gov, it gives you indexes of US government departments and agencies. Here's a game that I'm gonna put you on. See each of these agencies, all of these, Africa Command, all this BS crap, like they care about some people living in an entire continent called Africa, Air Force, Agriculture Library, alcohol and tobacco firearm and each of these have different USC's that govern them the army have USC's that govern them when you go all the way to E E elder justice initiative have USC that govern them economic research same thing all the way to GSA each and every one of these so-called departments and agencies are 508 entities. Remember I told you in the past the U.S. structure is based on a sole corporate based on Ecclesiastes jurisdiction? That's exactly this right here is what I mean. What you're looking at here are not just some acute small little departments. When you go out there and you look at one building for each of these departments, it's like an empire of its own. It's like a palace of its own. Because those are individual entities that are exempt by themselves. When you see these, see each and every one of these as though they are individual 508 entities. But they come together under the banner of the trust called United States of America. Therefore, they benefit from something called group exemption. When you and other trusts come together, each trust that comes together, either through 508 or express trust individually, they specialize in certain things based on the competence of the parties that create those particular express trusts. And each express trust or each 508 becomes a certain department of that original body politic that all of you come together to make, just as the United States does. The United States of America also have group exemptions. People don't know that. The IRS will issue body politics of trust. That's what makes it body politics. Something called group exemption number. Which goes back to this question this man asked when it comes to the gen number. The gen number is just abbreviation for group exemption number. The IRS sometimes recognizes a group of organizations as tax exempt. If they are affiliated with a central organization, the IRS sometimes recognizes this sometimes meaning you don't have to get them to recognize you it's optional it's not a mandatory thing that you have to do just because you're doing it do you know how many u.s government agencies exist now that are quote unquote classified that you will never hear of and you have never heard of unless they want you to and they do it through some type of psychops and they refer to it as the buzzword of CT word that ends with theorist. Those are usually the Department of Government that it's no one's business because it's a trust of fears. It's the reason why I'm always so flabbergasted, actually, actually flabbergasted when people make a big deal out of the US not showing the public this, not showing the public that. This US thing that you're looking at is just a conglomerate of different trusts called departments and agencies, aka close corporations that come together to make USA. If you know how the Confederation and Articles of Association work, then you would comprehend it and see it clearly for exactly what it is. At first, they began by naming their <laughs> that internationally, aka not qualifying for court tests and control tests, or you do it domestically on a financial level when it comes to having a socioeconomic backbone to do things as an inside sophisticated investor. The IRS refers to that as group exemption number. 
The iris sometimes, I've already showed you and explained what the sometimes mean, so I hope that's clear at this point. The iris sometimes recognizes a group of organizations. Again, I'll emphasize this sometimes is an optional thing, discretionary at your end. No one is forcing you to do anything because if you're exempt, then no one can force you to do anything. We went over that in this five point video. And also we went over that in all Express Trust videos when it comes to the fact that Express Trust simply don't qualify based on how you structure it, simple and straightforward. So once more, I know it sounds like exaggeration, but it really isn't, especially if this is your first time hearing or seeing any such thing in this reality. Does sometimes mean it is your choice? Not that they're accepting or they're denying you or they're giving you the finger or they're giving you the stone wall and you're going, oh no, another blockade. No, not that. When you function at certain levels, you have the option to pick and choose and they simply serve. Simple. That state of mind people have when they say you're a servant, this and that, right? We get to really do that. That's what this sometimes be. All right. The IRS sometimes recognizes a group, a group. I, I, I hope at this point you already know what I mean by this group. The IRS sometimes recognizes a group of organizations as tax exempt if they are affiliated with a central organization. This central organization is the equivalent of the United States, aka a conglomerate, aka the body politic, aka the nation state that you will create through different types of trusts that are naturally exempt. And other third parties will want to come under that blanket if you want to do things within the geographical bounds of North America while still remaining exempt so that they can gain the benefit of the status of that body politic. Simple. This avoids, remember, we went over in this video the difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. Procedures. Yes, IRS have procedures also. When it comes to group exemption, the two most important procedures are the right. Those procedures are what those people use to create IRS codes and exemptions and other things that hold people liable. And those phone number and that dossier were shown in this video and attached to this video. But anyway, moving on. So we're not going to be looking at their procedures. We're just going to look at the IRS publication, particularly this one, publication. The complete 42-minute video is on the Patreon page. Take care. Best of luck.